Hello, in this video I am going to talk about insulin mechanism of action. So as you can see here after taking a lunch full of carbohydrate our blood glucose level our blood glucose level will increase. So when we take food the food goes into the intestine and inside the intestine it would be converted into the smaller forms so the starch it would be broken down into glucose and glucose will have to get inside the bloodstream and it will be spread around the body so what will happen in the cell of intestinal lumen there are sodium dependent glucose transporters also known as SGLT so it will take sodium ion inside as well as glucose so glucose will enter through the apical surface with the help of SGLT into the luminal cells and there we have GLUT the glucose transporters so glucose transporter will take in glucose and glucose will enter into the bloodstream that means here represented as a capillary here glucose will enter into the capillary and would be spread around the body so what we now have the blood glucose level is pretty high say for instance now this glucose keeps circulating and get into the skeletal muscle so now what will happen to the happen to the glucose we will see so here is a cell so this is a skeletal muscle cell at the meantime when blood glucose level in increases body also sends that blood glucose is pretty high so body will secrete insulin from the pancreas and this insulin will come here and bind to the insulin receptor on the surface of the skeletal muscle cell so the insulin binds to the receptor tyrosine kinase or also pronounced as RTK now the insulin will do stuffs inside the cell so that a preformed vesicles which contain GLUT4 that means the glucose transporter can dock in so insulin binding ultimately triggers GLUT4 vesicle docking to the membrane site so once the GLUT4 more GLUT4 ves uh, vesicles dock to the membrane more the number of the GLUT4 vesicles get onto the surface of the cell membrane now we will see the insulin when binds to the RTK it will trigger a conformational change and that will lead to the tyrosine kinase activity of its cytosolic domain and the tyrosine residues get phosphorylated here you can see the tyrosine residues get phosphorylated and with this tyrosine residue another kinase can bind this kinase is known as PI3 kinase or PI3K so phosphatidyl inositol 3 kinase either it could directly dock to the phosphotyrosine residue or it can dock via the insulin receptor substrate or IRS so once PI3 kinase bind and activated PI3 kinase would convert PIP2 to PIP3 actually PI3 kinase phosphorylated PIP2 to PIP3 and this PIP3 which is phosphatidyl inositol 345 trisphosphate activates AKT or also known as protein kinase B actually it was found in ACT8 retrovirus and hence the name so this ACT or PKB will go to the vesicles and it can convert RAB GDP to GTP RAB in GTP bound form is active and what happened in the normal state the adapter proteins of this vesicle are inhibited by a cap protein so what happens this PKB actually phosphorylates this cap and now the caps fall off when the caps fall off these vesicles could be loaded onto the kinesin motors this kinesin motor motors are trucks they will carry the vesicle to their desired destination here in the membrane so these vesicles loaded onto the kinesin will move 
on the microtubules so the microtubules are the highways and ultimately the GLUT4 vesicles will fuse into the membrane and allowing more and more glucose uptake by this muscle cell and the muscle cell can utilize this glucose for energy purpose you remember the glycolysis and this signaling is pretty important to understand diabetes so in type 1 diabetes insulin level is pretty low so when insulin level is low this signaling doesn't take that doesn't take place and if take place it's pretty inefficient so what happens we don't have much this GLUT4 basic uh, GLUT4 transporters on the membrane however in the type 2 diabetes insulin is okay insulin is formed but the receptor and the insulin interaction is not sensitive so insulin can bind to the receptor but doesn't trigger the cascade of reactions or what happened in the type 2 diabetes any of these steps of this total signal transduction cascade could be faulty as a result these GLUT4 vesicles would not fuse to the membrane and it will not allow glucose to enter the cell so another interesting aspect is these GLUT4 transporters GLUT4 are exclusively found in skeletal muscle whereas GLUT1 is found in RBC GLUT3 in brain GLUT2 in liver for instance in liver when glucose needed to be converted into glycogen so liver will uptake with GLUT2 transporter not by GLUT4 and in brain so brain food is actually glucose so brain exclusively utilize glucose for energy so brain, brain need to take up glucose by GLUT3 if much of these transporter are not in the membrane so what will happen even if glucose is present in the peripheral region the cell cannot uptake glucose and cannot utilize so that happens into the diabetes where glucose is present into the peripheral area of the cells but the cells cannot utilize glucose as a result the blood glucose level is pretty high and that would lead to some pathological conditions hope you enjoyed the video thank you